I'm Linda Pennywit, and this is my husband, Dr. W.H. Pennywit. And this is our second session, our second session of possibly quite a few, where we want to discuss um, where we basically got our training from and where, where our children, William, Josiah, and Nicole, got their training from. There's probably a lot about our children that you really don't know about, probably a lot of things that they have accomplished even while they were like tots Very like young. <laughs> yeah Nicole learned how to beat up on the devil when she was four years old mm -hmm. and she wasn't afraid of nothing she mm -hmm. and he threw quite a bit at her too but she fielded mm -hmm. every single bit of it and she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit when she was just barely two right right I remember that we lived in a little I think it was an 800 square foot house and the bedrooms were at one end, and then there's a little U-shape, and the kitchen was at the other end. And when I would get up early in the morning to pray in the spirit, I'd go into the living room. Or, I'm sorry, I'd go in through the living room into the kitchen. And the kitchen was tiled floor, and I actually memorized how many steps it would take to get from the end of the tile where the carpet is to the sink and then back again. And I would close my eyes. So you would run into the sink? Right. Well, I ran into the sink a few times until I figured out how far my steps should be. And I would just close my eyes and walk back and forth and pray in the Spirit. And I was doing that one morning. I was just praying in tongues and walking back and forth and praying in tongues and walking back and forth. And all of a sudden, and I, I had my eyes closed because I knew how far to walk, I heard this little echo. And for about five minutes, I couldn't figure out what this little echo was. <laughs> and I looked down, and there was my little three-year-old, red-headed Nicole, two-year-old, two, two years old, right? And she had her little onesie on with the little feet on the bottom of it. And she was just looking up at me, keeping up with me, praying in tongues. And um, she doesn't, and, and you know, the beautiful thing about it, she doesn't ever remember not praying in tongues. Yeah. And she still says to this day, Dad, I remember that morning. I remember that. Now, at two years old, how she could... Well, I remember the, when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It was in the middle of the South China Sea, right off the coast of Vietnam, but I remember. And you, I guess we all remember where, where we you know, were saved, where we received the, the baptism and, and the Holy Spirit. So um, they, were, they were prepared because... When they would go to sleep, Will, Josiah, and Nicole, we would put uh, Mom and Dad Copeland's, they were cassettes at the time, yeah. we would put the cassette tapes in. Mm -hmm. And until we went to bed, they would listen to him preach and teach. And we would also have the Bible. We had yes. the Bible on I cassette. Think. They would go, in fact, we figured out how to do it a continuous loop, and they listened to that all night long. Mm -hmm. So they were full of the Holy Ghost, they were full of fire, they were full of the Word. And what we learned when we were living in the house, as far as weather patterns go, right? Mm -hmm. That is, that, that says something. Whenever there's a, a bad weather system, and it, it was like this where we were, mm -hmm. we had, I think, there were what, five or six tornadoes that went right through our area and it didn't touch one shingle from our house. There was one tornado that was so big, we were out in the country, as we said in our first um, episode, uh, we were out in, in the country, 12 miles in between two smaller towns, and in front of the, the parsonage was a wheat field, corn field, soybean field, whatever the farmer was planting that year, over to the to over this side was um, a guy that owned some cows and a bull. Hayfield. Mm -hmm. And we figured out that Nicole and Josiah were over there playing with the bull. Yes. In the barn. <laughs> we said, "Oh yeah, Daddy, we went up and pet the bull all the time." And I thought, "Can you do that?" Well, they did. <laughs> so they must have had some pretty strong angels around them. So, and then on the other side was like a, a cornfield, but there was woods, thick woods behind our house. Um, Went on for miles. Right, and the, the 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 oak trees and the trees there were big. They were very very. It was a very old woods, and these trees were were giants. 
and one tornado, and we knew it was coming toward our house because we could see it. Mm -hmm. We cursed it. We said, you, you're not going to touch our property. Yeah. And we took authority over it. We said, peace be still. Well, it, it peace be still where our property was concerned, but it danced over our property, went into the backwoods back there, and it snapped these big oak trees in half Huge. like kindling. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was a pretty powerful tornado. Well, we were never touched even never. one time. Not once. Mm -hmm. There was one time when a tornado was blowing through across the the property and we had a big tree in the front of our house and the tornado was blowing this tree almost the, the top of the tree was almost touching the pine the, tree. The, the, the ground. Mm -hmm. Now there was a tree in front of the pine tree. Mm -hmm. That was a tree that was really blowing over. And I don't know how this tree didn't blow over but long story short, a mother and father and two children, their car was blown off the road into our the front of the church. Mm -hmm and they were trying to get into the church and they were banging on the doors and screaming at the top of their lungs and the tornado was going right through at the time. I ran out into the front yard and whistled. I can whistle really loud and that's what it took to get their attention because it was very loud, like a freight train going through. And they saw me and it was raining to beat the band and they all came running into the house and I went in after them and of course we got the towels out for them because they were dripping wet and after they left, we looked at each other and I said, Linda, I'm not wet. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even wet. I stood out That's in right. that rain, in that tornado that was coming through, and I didn't even get wet. Mm -hmm. I didn't even get wet. So we had the authority mm -hmm. and the enemy wasn't going to hurt us, mm -hmm. and we knew that. But whenever a tornado went through, we knew where it came from. The way, and what what a lot of people don't don't realize is, um, there there are forces out there, and there are forces that control people. And well, the wickets, and Satan, that's yeah, what it comes down other to. people as well. And they they can whip up storms sometimes. I don't know how they do it, but we, we knew where, where it, it came from. I know it takes a lot of resource. You know, I mean, all Jesus had to say was, peace be still. Mm -hmm. Didn't even break a sweat. Mm -hmm. But to do something like that, it takes a lot of resource. And we just beat every one of them. Every mm -hmm. one of them that came, we whooped them. We beat every one of them, didn't we? Through the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. And the testimony. word of our testimony. Absolutely correct. And so it got to the point to where they he lost interest in, in trying to, to blow us off of that hill. Mm -hmm. But um, because we can do what Jesus did. And the Bible even says that we can do even greater things. And so when Jesus was on that boat in the middle of the storm, and, and they say that... Um, that it was actually hurricane winds that were happening at that yep. time. And the disciples ran to Jesus and they said, hey, you know, shook him, wake him up. Jesus, Jesus, don't you care? We're going to be drowning here, you know? So he got up and he stood up and he said, peace, be still. He spoke to the wind and the waves and peace. So because Jesus did that, we knew that he had given us the power and authority to do that as well. And so when we stood out there, when those tornadoes were coming our way, we just spoke to them. We said, uh-uh, peace be still in Jesus' name. And they had to go. Now, if you're not prepared yes. <laughs> to do that, yes. don't do that. Don't say, well, Doc and Linda Penny were stood out in front of a tornado, so I'm going to do the same thing. If you're prepared and you're prayed up and your faith is strong and it's something that you feel led to do, by all means. But if, if not, mm -hmm. just <laughs> go into the storm cellar or whatever. But... I think what, what Jesus was probably thinking is, as he woke up, you mean you guys didn't take care of this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll take care of it for you, you know, and mm -hmm. so, but eventually they learned how to do it. Right. But he taught us how to do it. Yes. And, but one of the things, one of the first verses of scripture, or, or passages that he led us to, was Ephesians chapter 1, starting at verse, uh, let's start at verse 17 and go to verse 23. And then Ephesians chapter 3, starting at verse 14, and going to verse 21. 
Now, the, the Ephesians chapter 1 talks about authority of the believer. Authority. What we have authority over. Chapter 3 tells us how to, how, what the fuel is for that. Yes. And it is love. Because faith works, works by, by love. And that's the only way it's going to work. That's and right. so, all those people that you have ought against, you got to get that taken care of before your faith is really going to be strong. Mm -hmm. So, he says, starting in Ephesians chapter 1, verse, starting in verse 18, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know you will know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe. These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenlies. Far above, and here it is, this is where our victory comes from, far above all rule, authority, power, dominion, every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, that's us, yes. the fullness of him who fills all in all. And if you want to tack uh, chapter 2, verse 6 onto that, that would be appropriate because it says, and he raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places. Mm -hmm. So whatever's under Jesus' feet, if you're sitting right next to him, it's under your feet as well. That's right. And then uh, Ephesians chapter 4, or I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 3, starting at verse um, 16, that he would grant us, the church, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. There's the faith. And what comes after it? And you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge. Now what that means is, whatever you're facing, the love of Christ surpasses that. You don't have to understand how you're going to get that bill paid. You don't have to understand how you're going to defeat that 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 enemy, that devil, uh, that sickness. Uh, it doesn't matter. You don't need to know how. You need to know the love of God. You need to know the love of Christ. That's what's going to put you over. And so that you know, may know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, and here it is, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. And so the Lord took us to those, and he had us to read over them again and again and again. And later after that, we found out that Granddad Hagen uh, read that the. Ephesians chapter 1 over a thousand times in like a summer. He did, and if you get into his book, The Believer's Authority, he, he explains that. And so we took that authority and we began to go back against Satan. It's like we said, we knew he couldn't hurt us. Yes. And when, the, when, when, when the, the, the demonic things would happen, whenever they would manifest or whatever, uh, the kids would laugh, especially Nicole. She would just laugh, and she would march around that house and say, Satan, in Jesus' name, I bind you up. I cast you down. I put you under my feet. And she'd march around that house and just, in fact, one day, this giant of a man came to the parsonage. Remember that? Mm -hmm. He had to be six eight, six nine if he was an inch, and he he was giant. And he said, uh, Pastor, I did, and we'd never seen him before, really. He mm -hmm. said, uh, I know that, uh, you know, that, that you guys are, you know, healing type people. I don't know exactly how he put it, but he said, uh, I don't know, do you remember what it was? His kidneys were hurting. I thought it was his lungs. His lungs, his mm -hmm. stomach, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it was his kidneys or what. And we were ready to pray for him, and little Nicole couldn't have been more than four and a half, maybe. She was probably five at the yeah. time. She came marching around the corner, marched up to that guy, put her hands on him, and looked up and says, In Jesus' name, I bind up that sickness. Command her to go right now. By a stripes, you're healed. And she marched back out of that living room. <coughs> and we just kind of, you know, we followed up. 
you know, we figured, well, gee, that's done. And he called us the very next day, didn't he? Well, actually, right then and there, he was he was stunned, yeah. first of all, that yeah. she came right. And then something he, happened. Yeah, he was like, he, yeah. he knew something had he didn't immediately know what it was. changed. Yes. It's and so I think he called us the next day, and he said, Pastor, I want you to know when that little redhead laid hands on me, uh, something shot through my body. I don't know what it was. He said, but nothing hurts anymore. He said, everything is fine. And I said, well, yes, sir. That's Certainly good. it is. Certainly, it, you know, because the word of God works. Every and time. Nicole, with that childlike faith, she went marching through there and just took care of business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she was always the one that, that really had the line on the laying on the hands as far as prayer goes. <clears throat> and, uh, We'll get into Josiah maybe a session or two later, but the Lord led us to begin to take authority yes. over the church because when you'd walk into that church, you knew evil was in there. You knew it. <coughs> Excuse me. Not much frightens me at all, and you know that. But when I would walk over to that church at, at night, every hair on my body would stand on end. It was a freaky place to be. And, um, you know, I didn't want to be in there any more than I had to. And even during the day, there was just a, a dank blackness that just hung over it. And so the, there was a, down in the basement, there was a little maybe 10 by 10 room that was a pastor's office. And we went down there. And we would pray two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, and then two, or really more than two hours in the evening because that's when we would really cut loose with it. And we kept praying, and we did that for an entire summer. We did that for three months, seven days a week. Eight hours, at like six to eight hours a day, we would pray. And we were in a spiritual battle. And as you say, we prayed in the Spirit because that's what the Holy Spirit said to do. And, of course, we would speak the Word and we would bind up Satan, but most of it was done in the Spirit. Perfect and prayer. tell about the day that we knew that that evil presence left the church. Well, we may want to take <clears throat> that in the next session. Okay. Let's do okay. that in the next session. Well, you, you don't want to miss the next session. <laughs> I was going to tell you now, but... <laughs> Linda says, let's wait till the next session. We want to keep your interest here, right? Yes. So um, you don't want to miss the next session because we're going to tell you how we knew. Because when, when I would walk into the church and I said, Lord, show me this, show me this. And what I saw in the spirit was this, this shaft of light that went from the, it, from the top of the church down in through the ground. And I knew this shaft of light wasn't wasn't godly. It wasn't a godly thing. And so it really had a hold of the place. And when it finally did let go, boy howdy, you knew it. And so we're going to discuss that the next time. So is there anything else that we want to say before we say bye? No, I think that's good. Okay. Night. Well, thank you for tuning in. And session three is going to be coming real soon. And so until then, we love you. And as Dad Copeland says, Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord.